This past Saturday in my hometown of Oberlin, the local theater, the Apollo, reopened. It was a pretty thrilling occasion, as it's been closed now for over a year, and let me tell you, it looked pretty gorgeous. We need more small-town theaters such as this. There's a uniqueness and an overwhelming emotional connection to the wonder and awe of past cinema that I don't think can be reproduced in chain theaters. Well, one of the opening ceremonies included a presentation of short films by the Apollo Outreach Initiative, a film workshop for high schoolers that I participated in this past summer. The short I helped create and starred in was shown, and I got to make a short impromptu speech along with the brilliant director Jonathan Demi. I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video. Afterwards, I caught up with Mr. Demi for an interview to ask him some of your questions, as well as my own. I'm standing here with the director of Philadelphia with Tom Hanks, uh, the Neil Young documentaries, fantastic movies, and of course his best known work, The Silence of the Lambs, which won a truckload of Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Picture. Uh, this is Jonathan Demi. Hi. Uh, Hi. <laughs> this is where you start clapping at the screen. Uh, Mr. Demi, um, with the advent of such things as Netflix and Hulu and all these streaming services, you were standing outside of a, a theater that you helped re-renovate. Re, uh, Why do we still need theaters today? Well, I, I, I sort of feel, don't you, that um, the experience of seeing the imagery huge on a screen with a contemporary sound delivery is an experience you just can't get at home. Oh yeah, because it's the way it was intended to be seen. Yeah, and there's also for me that, that subtle but to me really profound uh, idea of uh, a shared experience, being part of an audience, being part of 10 people, 100 people, maybe five or 600 people mm. watching the same movie, having the same reactions. I like that a lot. Yeah, me too. I, I can totally agree to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, watching The Silence of the Lambs, fantastic movie. Thank you. Um, what is it about madness that interests us? What is, what is that fascinates us about insanity? Oh, yeah, that's a, I guess we're afraid of it, right? I mean, I think that that's uh, uh, always a big draw for any kind of story, whether it's in a movie or around a campfire. If you can get us scared um, that something can happen to us, um, then you've got our attention. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's a very serious subject, though, the whole idea of what we say crazy, um, really, we'd have to say is mental illness. It's uh, evidence of you know tremendous disturbation, and it's probably might be evidence of of uh, abuse suffered uh, uh, as a child. Like in Science of the Lambs, you know, it's a scary movie. There's this guy, James Gum, and what have you. Mm -hmm. But uh, we tried to and somehow or other suggest that this is someone who had had uh, suffered tremendous abuse as a child. Dr. Lecter tells Clarice Starling that. Um, so, you know, um, uh, we have to, you know, our hearts have to go out to people who are crazy. It's a bad word, you know, mm. because they're, they're mentally ill. Yeah. Um, but they scare us. We get scared. You know, unpredictability scares us. You know, we're, we feel very vulnerable, especially in these troubled times. I agree. Huh. Now, um, you've turned mostly to, you've done a lot of documentaries within the past decades. Of course, you've been working in film ever since the 70s, right? right? Um, what, what can a documentary give an audience that perhaps a fictional film cannot? Yeah, well that's one of, what I love, one of the things I love about documentaries uh, is the fact that we can be moved by real people and real dilemmas and challenges that we right. capture in documentaries. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Um, I think it's very, the irony is that as a filmmaker who does both kinds of films, when I'm doing a fiction film I'm trying to make it seem as truthful as possible and as real as possible, right. and when I'm doing a documentary, I'm trying to make it as entertaining as possible. Ah. Uh, and I also have a couple questions from a couple of my followers. Um, Aaron Krauss on Facebook wanted to know how you feel about the new Silence of the Lambs um, musical. Oh yeah, I saw it. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. The music's great. The cast is great. Um, yeah, m I think most of us who were connected with the movie have been to see it by now, and everybody enjoys it enormously. Jody Foster thought it was hilarious. <laughs> awesome. Do you still keep in contact with the people that you work with? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, not you know on a on a weekly basis, but yes, over over the months, over the years, yes, indeed. Oh, cool. And uh, Sam Pelham on Facebook, as well as Crumbs Nine Hundred on YouTube, was um, wondering how you got your start in this business. What were some trials that you had to overcome? Yeah, well, I, I didn't have any trial. The only trial I had to overcome was um, learning how to make movies mm. uh, because I was un untrained in it. Uh, no, I was very lucky. Uh, people can't 
wait for for this to happen to them. What happened to me was um, uh, I love movies so much that I started writing movie reviews and uh, for a little paper, and then um, which got me into the movies for free. <laughs> and then I had an opportunity to write um, publicity material for a movie company, so I got into a movie company. And then um, I met Roger Corman, who's uh, started many careers. And oh, yeah. He said, well, you, you write good publicity material. Maybe you could um, write a screenplay for my new company. So I oh, did cool. with my friend Joe Viola. And we gave it to Mr. Corman, and he read it and went, this is pretty good. Jonathan, you want to produce it? So I was like 25 years old or something like that, and suddenly I'm producing movies when I hadn't really had that goal. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go after one more, okay? Okay, yeah, one more question then. Um, a little late. After the huge success of Silence of the Lambs, uh, do you have a, did you have that point where you were like, how do I go from here? I've done got so much critical acclaim from that film. How did you continue onward and say, i got to do something different? And it's going to be, like, did you have that kind of moment? Well, um, I've, I've always, uh, any movie I've ever made has been because I've, I, I felt... Uh, great enthusiasm for the script or in the case of a documentary the subject matter and uh, after Science of the Lambs I, it, you know, it did give me some heightened currency you know in the movie business and uh, you know I've, uh, I'm very happy to do Philadelphia after that you know we decided we wanted to my, my partner Ed Saxon and the great writer Ron Nicewaner and Mark Platt who was um, uh, kind of an executive who was very con at Sony who was very concerned with making a film about AIDS and we just went for it and I think the the popularity of Science of the Lambs probably helped fuel our ability to get Philadelphia made. Okay. Well thank you so much for your time. Okay, pleasure. Very valuable. That was a lot of fun. Wonderful thank person you. and work. uh I enjoyed your new documentary and thank you. I'd encourage everyone watching to check it out because it's amazing. Thank you so much. All right, keep it up. Great work. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Do you want me to stand here? Yeah, okay. so it's, it's a short okay. microphone. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm standing here with the director. <laughs> I'm standing here with the director of Philadelphia with Tom Hanks.